Six million people incarcerated. There was no successor for Joseph. This is one of the reasons, not the only reason, why it took so long for God to raise up another deliverer because Joseph ain't trained nobody to do what he done. This is the nature of unselfish people. They may do great things in great places for a great God, but if they don't train other people to do what they do, there is going to be a span of time that people are going to go through and there's going to be a measure of suffering all for the result, all for the mere fact that they didn't train nobody else. So here we got 400 years. And God told Abraham, he said, now your seed is going to suffer for 400 years. It's just like the welfare system. You on welfare, your children are on welfare, their children are on welfare, and their children's children are on welfare. Because nobody wants to come out who can live on $500 a month. Nobody wants the truth. This is not no little cute mamsy pamsy message. This right here is for people who want truth and who wants to break the chains of the enemy and who wants to mentally be set free from this wooden law. Yes, White and blacks. This is the speech. I'm going to read this today. And I'm going to go through this law. And I'm going to put scripture behind everything he say and do. Because you can take something good like the Bible. And twist it. And sell it to people. Hear me. It'll still work. Amen. Amen. Let me put it in a little bit more practical way. You can take a gun and go out and just kill people. It'll work. Or you can take a gun and go to bed and find somebody in your house, violating your house, and kill them. It'll still work. Doesn't matter. The gun works whether you use it for evil. The gun works whether you use it for good. The Bible declares whosoever believes, if you got faith in this word, you can use it the wrong way. You got faith in this word, you can use it the right way. This joker right here. He knew that the laws of the gospel work, and he pushed this movement and he communicated it to white groups, culture people, and he said it would also work with your overseers. Two overseers. That means the slave masters, that was the overseer. Then the overseers that was in white pool pits. I don't agree with crime, but I must say I understand why they do what they do. Because trouble, and I've been saying it, it's not trouble till it hits your house. Amen. It's not trouble till it hits your community. It's not trouble till it hits your culture. It's not trouble till it hits your country. It's not trouble till it hits your state. It's not trouble till it hits your family. It's not trouble till it hits your city. Sometimes trouble has to hit home. Cause a rude awakening before people will respond, and that's what's happening right now. But we're dealing with people that are not thugs. They're just tired. And we keep walking in peace and marching in peace. And the more we walk in peace and march in peace, we lose more and more and more black men with no guns down on the ground, being shot in the back, being shot in the head. We lose more and more black men. Amen. I'm about to read this. Here's my statement before I get to this one of this thing. And I'm going right to the text. People Talk about Colin Kaepernick. Let me clear this up. They say that he's dishonoring the veterans. I mean, dishonoring the veterans. What, what, what you mean? What, what, what you mean, dishonoring the veterans? What you mean by that? Let me tell you something, Mr. Mrs. Whoever. Why should, I'm a black man. 
us born and raised in America. Why should I stand here and put my hand over a flag and pledge of allegiance to a flag who Willie Lynch said is a zero, don't exist. If I don't exist, I don't exist to pledge. Try somewhere else. Why should I stand up and pledge of allegiance to a flag that don't acknowledge me as a person? When they look at me as a person, they say that's a zero. He don't exist. A no existence person cannot pay, pay reverence to a flag and furthermore, they don't even acknowledge that we're people, we're humans. They say we're zeros. It's in the will of Lynch law. Amen. So why, do, why should I stand and pledge of allegiance? Why? What's wrong with me kneeling? When you go to court, if you're a Christian, don't they tell you you can bow out? Well, I'm bowing out. I don't want to pledge of allegiance. I just choose to bow out on my knees. Amen. I know folk are scared. Because people get scared. But let me share something with you. Until you're willing to sacrifice all, even as Christians, you won't have to give up something, baby. Amen. To live is Jesus Christ. To die to yourself is gain. Yes. yes. However, to gain the world and lose your soul is a great loss. Amen. Two people that gave everything they had for what they believe in. Three, apostles stand to you, because I believe in what God told me to do. So we went and got this without people knowing that God told us to do it. Number two, Colin Kaepernick gave us his professional career because he believed in what he was doing. And the third one was Martin Luther King who sacrificed it all. We got to have people who are willing to pay it all. Pay the ultimate price. However, don't die premature to get the job done. Stay alive because God needs you here on this earth to make a difference. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're killing me. Amen. Kill me, God gonna kill you. Amen. Them dishonoring soldiers. They dead. It's just a piece of cloth. It'll burn like your shirt. Amen. Let me give it another way. It's paganism. Amen. It's paganism to worship a flag. It's paganism to worship a flag. It's just cloth. Amen. It'll burn like anything else. So you want to honor the flag and kill the black man. Mm. And assassinate people who refuse to pledge. Children of Israel, this is where he got that from, and twisted. Mm -hmm. God told Abraham, they, they take these laws from the Bible, twist it, and make it cultural. Just like the average black person, they said we're black because we're cursed. No, we're black because God created all mankind, races, creeds, and order. Let me help you here. In Genesis, every race, creed, and color was created right there. Amen. Amen. However, we are the only people on the planet. Look at here. What am I, Royal Pecan? High yellow? The next one, dark black. The other one, you know, Coconut brown, the other one is Carmel brown, the other, because we're the only culture of people that's been raped by slave masters. Yeah. Yeah. Raped our women. Yeah. Took our men out there in front of the women, poured gasoline on them, and burned them. It's in the Willow Lynch Law. To put fear in the hearts of the children and to paralyze the women and keep the dependency of the black women on the white man. Amen. So if we're going to have our white brothers and sisters participating in this movement because the revolution has begun, man your battle stations. 
ready your weapons. Lock and load. It's time to go to war. For the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. But the violent take it back by force. But yet we're not doing violence. Amen. Amen. Information. This speech was delivered by Willie Lynch on the bank of James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712. Lynch was a British slave owner in the West Indies. He was invited to the colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods to slave owners there. The term lynching is derived from his last name. Now, most people of color, this don't interest them. Amen. And my point this morning is, this is the root cause. Until you go back to the root of a problem and deal with it at the root, it's going to continue to repeat because he set a law into motion. And we have come full turn. They said people are violent. Yes, they are. I'm not agreeing with that. I understand it. They're burning down buildings. They're turning up police cars. How, what, what are one of the signs we've come full turn? Well, if you back up, I have videotapes and cassette tapes. And, you know, I have my library of, of history, past things I wasn't born, I didn't know. So I study it. On those videotapes back then, it was the police department and Jim Crow and the white man being violent. They were taking people, beating them with blackjacks, right. dragging them down the street, taking fire water hoses and spraying them down like animals. Right. So now the tables have turned. Now you got black folks saying, oh, no water hose this time, no blackjack this time. You got to understand why people are doing what they do. It don't mean you agree with it, but you have to understand the frame of mind whereby they are doing what they're doing. They're tired and they're fed up. And on top of that, the law has come full turn. But now it's not the people being sprayed down and beat with blackjacks and drugged through the streets. All right, all right. They're doing the dragging and the beating That's and the spraying. Right. That's right. You mean throw something out? So I got to hear it to get to a close so I can stop. God will let certain people do dirty work on his behalf and call it righteous. <laughs> Here we are. It says, gentlemen, I greet you here on the banks of the James River in the, here we go. It's all, they're using the Bible here. In the year of our Lord, 1,712. First, I shall thank you, the gentlemen of the colony of Virginia, for bringing me here. I'm here to help you solve some of your problems with slaves. Your invitation reached me on my modest plantation in the West Indies, where I have experimented with some of the newest and still oldest methods for controlling slaves. Ancient Rome would envy us if my program is implemented. As our boat sailed south on the James River, named for a illustrious king whose, ver here we go, whose version of the Bible we cherish. They are doing this in churches and it needs to stop. Amen. They're doing it in the home and it needs to stop. Amen. They're using the word of God and it needs to stop. Amen. If any man add to my word or take away from my word, the very prayers that he add and the prayers that he take away shall be added to that man's life. Amen. You don't twist God's word or you live a twisted life. Amen. Jesus. I saw enough to know that your problem is not unique. While Rome used cords 
of wood as crosses for standing. Human bodies along its highways in great numbers. They use crosses and woods like Jesus died. You're here using the tree and the rope on occasions. So in Rome, they used crosses. That's how Jesus died. It was a form of capital punishment. A milestone, a boulder around the neck. And when you molested children, they would tie a boulder around your leg, neck and take you out to the lake and throw it in the lake and you drown at the bottom of the ocean. It was a form of capital punishment. It's like here they have execution, they have hangings, they have a, 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 a lethal injection, they have the gas. They're different forms of capital punishment. He's saying they use crosses there. He's saying, I notice here you use rope. To hang. Mm -hmm. Now, people may say we're not slaves and we don't do that anymore. You on a rope. Amen. And you hang. That's right. mm -hmm. Hanging on for your dear life. Mm -hmm. We're living in modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. They've just modified it. They're not running around now, some of them, with sheets over their head right. and crosses in their hand and torches. They torture you on your job when they deny you a promotion. They torture you when you run for Senate as a black man or a strong black woman. They torture you. They torture you by not allowing you. How is it I pull up on the same job, work in the same area, supposedly the same pay, at 12 o'clock on Friday, you got a Winnebago hooked to a dually, your friend got a, a, a dually hooked to a boat, and I'm sitting there on a Friday, got to work four hours over, and you gone to the beach at four. How we get like that? Okay. How you able to walk into banks, institutions, and purchase homes and cars all in one pot with no damn payment? How? We're living right now in a modern day, a modern day segregation. It, it, you know, it's, it's obvious, but, but the thing is this, nobody is dealing with the root cause. Mm -hmm. It's being taught in the home. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's just mad. I am. Amen. In a righteous way. Amen. So here we are in Vance County. The smaller the city, the greater the monotony. That's right. Amen. Amen. The greater the control. Amen. We live in modern day segregation here. Why do you think Northern Van shut down? All right. <laughs> Why do you think Henderson Middle School and Eden Johnson shut down? Amen. Why do you think these schools are shutting down? Because we we taking money, tax paid dollars, opening up all of these private schools. That's not designed for blacks. So when you take away tax paid dollars. And open up all of these private schools. It affects the public school system. Amen. It affects the quality level of teaching. Amen. So now the teachers are underpaid. Amen. And there is no real wealth in the education system. As it relates to the public schools. So we had to take two high schools junior. Combine them together to make one junior high. We had to combine two high schools together to make one senior high. All of the other high schools are just sitting over there with grass going up around them. Amen. Amen. But you say we're not still living in the days of slaves. It's a different type of slavery. It's been modified, but we're still being incarcerated. We're still living a life of limitation. Look at these poor neighborhoods. All these houses run down and broke down over here. And they get their little white friends and white partners to go over there and buy the whole block. So why you can't buy that block? Amen. Amen. Your mama, my mama, your daddy, your daddy, your forefathers sweat and blood, worked and plowed to buy those properties that the families can't go and get. So what happens is they tax you. Mm -hmm. Then here comes one of their boys. And pay a penny for penny for the tax. And they own the family property. So now you got all of these different types of buildings and, and organizations coming up in an area that was owned once by successful black people. Amen. It's modern day. It's modern day. It's not about fighting with the fish and fighting with guns. We're bigger than that. We're better than that. However, if you shoot me, I ain't going to die. I might shoot back. 
I can't die. Amen. I got to live and declare the works of God. I got to stand up to proclaim that Jesus is coming. Because he said in Matthew 24 and 5, he said, these are the signs of my coming. There shall be wars, nation, ethnic wars. Said unto me, years ago, I'm going to finish this and stop. And the rest of y'all can come get it. That I was standing up under a tent. I had forgot all about it. Standing room only. My friend called me and she said, man, folk was lined all up in the all up and down the street in cars, pouring down rain. And I couldn't see the rain because I was caught up in that moment. He said, well, nowhere for nobody to stand. They were sitting in the car outside the road. He said, and, and my old school friend told me, he said, son, you know as long as you live, preach like that no more. That's a lie, but he said it. Let's give him credit. And he said this, so I can get to this right here and leave it a good pause. He said, you stood up and prophesied. And you said it was going to be a racial war. I had just recently, he said this. He said, you said it's going to be a racial war. It's going to break out. It's going to be global. And I had just recently, one of my spiritual daughters said, Apostle, we got this in place. We got this in place. We got this in place. Because people are something for me. I said, ho, wait a minute. They, they, they summons for me on, on, on Monday. Want me to give them a date. I said, hold on. I said, another wave is getting ready to hit. Before I could get off the phone Monday, that's when our culture brother got killed. And now the wave done hit. Why? Because we're living in an apostolic and a prophetic hour. And people need truth. Amen. They need truth. They need to know that they need not just truth. They need to know that this comes out of the word of God. Amen. We know that whoever's communicating the truth is the word of God. It, they're, they're driven by the Spirit of God. And, 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 and I'm saying all of that to say we're in that wave right now. We're in it right now. Amen. You got people over here who are asleep and slumber. You have people over here, they're alive and alert. And the real problem, and I'm talking to my white brothers and sisters, because we need your help. Mm -hmm. Not because we're pitiful. Now we ain't pitiful. No, we need your help Amen. to come against this onslaught of evil. Mm -hmm. We need your help to overthrow this law that this man set into motion. And today, right now, the 31st of May, this law is still effectively working in its effective relationship. Black, white, Hispanics, Native Americans, they got a new relationship. Other folk that don't even know what their nationality is. I can't sit there with my white friend and act like racism don't exist. Amen. I caught a whip of the dead slave from a tree a couple of miles back. This is one of the next talking. This is a speech. I'm going to get this out and I'm going to bring it to a close. L listen to what he say. You're not... You, you're not only losing valuable stock by hangings. You're having uprisings. Slaves are running away. Your crops are sometimes left in the field too long for maximum profit. I'm ready to tie this here. You suffer occasion fires. That's what's going on right now. Fires, you're burning in turn. You come suffer occasion fires. Your animals are killed. Gentlemen, you know what your problems are. Just like I know what the root problem is going on right now. I do not need to elaborate. I'm not here to enumerate your problems. I'm here to introduce you to a method of solving problems. Here's the method of solving problems. I just read it to you in Exodus chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Because they are taking this information from the Bible and twisting it. And listen to this. It's working. Amen. What happened in Exodus? Joseph was dead. A new king, a new president, a new male, a new police chief. See, it's not about, listen to me, 
It's not about putting a new person in the office. If you get a new person in the same office with the same mindset, then this the last state is going to be worse than the former. Amen. Regardless of who we put into offices, the mindset needs to be changed. Yes. And the only way we're able to change the mindset of people in high places, first of all, is let's talk about the root of the problem. What's the root cause? Amen. Why do y'all kill black folk? I'm telling you why they kill you. I've been preaching milk, meat, bread, man. I said you are a commodity. Look up the street from this church. The liquor store sitting up there. You don't call it the liquor store. Look, go down Andrews Avenue, the main drag. It's, a look, it's two liquor stores over there. Go down there, the bottom portion of Latin, Latin, Andrews Avenue. It's a liquor store over there on the right and a liquor store over there on the left. I don't care where you go. Go down Andrews Avenue. Go to the west side of town. It's a liquor store over there on the right. Travel on down by the football field. It's another liquor store over there on the left. Go down Diamond Drive. No liquor stores. Let me, let me help some of y'all slow folk. Liquor stores, giving you this in real language, is not the one that has the big ABC sign on it. It's them little stores in black neighborhoods right. selling that cheap wine, them gizzards and them chicken legs. Yes, you don't find them in no white neighborhoods. Let's talk about the root of the problem. Let's talk about what's really going on here. This is what he's saying. He's saying you're losing good stock. Don't hang them. Get them out there and let them work your fields and prime your tobacco. Get them out there and work your fields and let them pick your cotton. Get them out there and let them work your fields. Get them out there. Put them in your stores and give them the very lowest of minimum wage. And have them work the most hours on a job. Afflict them with their burdens. Abuse them with their burdens. Have them work seven days a week, not six days and rest on a seventh day. Work the living snot out of them. This is our market in buy, sell, and trade. It's working the black now. You don't hear they saying black. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Amen. See, some preacher need to catch this right here and domino it. I need a white preacher to preach this. Y'all white folks started it. You need to finish it. You need to fix that. I believe white America, white Germany, white Russia, white China, white over there in Africa, I believe white folk need to apologize to us publicly because they have humiliated us for years after years after years after years. And if you humiliate me publicly, then you need to honor me and pay tribute to me publicly. Wherever you offended me at, that's where you need to exalt me at. Yes. Amen. I'm bringing it in. What's our train of thought this morning? The root cause. That's what we're dealing with. What's getting into these policemen? Same thing in the policemen and the president. All right. Amen. He's good at insulting other folk. Well, when people stand back up to him, then he wanted to get rid of uh, media ministry. That's right. Amen. Amen. He can throw blows, but he can't take blows back. Amen. Amen. He's good at insulting people. Amen. But he can't take corrective criticism back. Amen. And when you write, you write. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And white don't make it right. That's why we need white folk who are truly born again, standing for what's right. Bringing it in. He says in my bag here, I have, found, I have foolproof method of controlling black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it would control the slaves, look at this, for at least 300 years. My method is simple. And members of your family and any overseer that's pastor or slave owner, sorry, I'm boring you this morning. Jesus, Lord. 
can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I take these differences and make them bigger. I use fear. Amen. I use distrust. Mm -hmm. I use envy for control purposes. Th these, are, these are attributes that he's communicating. And, and you got to understand, this is what's being preached in white churches. I don't want to come to me. Don't approach me. Don't come try to tell me nothing. Because you don't know what God told me. I'm do what I'm told to do. I'm going to do it in a God way. You can't feel compassion. Get over it. I'm going to tell the truth. Because the best ever time right now. That black folk are going to be set free. If it don't happen right now. It's going to take another 400 years. And I'm going to guarantee tell you. That we ain't got another 400 years. Here on this planet. On this earth. In the state that it is in right now. Because in the moment of a trickling of an eye. Jesus is going to be descending from heaven the way he went. And he's going to stretch forth his hands. And not just call the black man. Or the white man. Or the native of America. No. He's going to call the Ecclesia by his name. And when he called the Ecclesia. We coming up out of here Jack. Closing. I went to Exodus. Amen. I'm going to pitch a lot of scriptures because I'm not through with this. They were incarcerated 400 years. He guaranteed them if you take this principle and apply it correctly, in the other teachings he has, He's targeting certain arenas and areas that he really need dire strain for that information to get. And I'm here to tell you today, it's in those areas, like the White House. Amen. 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 And the trick of trade is this. You got more black popular people back to it than whites. Amen. Big name hitters. Bind into the program. So you're out the hood. The hood made you go back to the hood and help the hood. You've got your Bentley. You've got your car. I'm not preaching against wealth and prosperity. I'm saying some of y'all name brand people like Colin Kaepernick, who sup he sacrificed everything. Amen. Amen. Everybody else took tail and rain. The man won't dishonor him. Or disgracing our veterans. He was talking about why pledge of allegiance to a flag that don't acknowledge you as a person. People don't get that. You ain't no people, you're a zero. If you're a zero, you can't pledge. Well, Wake up. Amen. amen. So since I'm a zero, I don't exist no way. So why should my kneeling affect you? Why should my kneeling offend you? Why should my kneeling be a disrespect to a dead soldier? Thank God for him while he was alive. I'd rather pay tribute to a live dog than a dead hero. Say that again. I'd rather pay tribute to a live dog than a dead hero. Celebrate people when they're dead and make it paganistic. Want to kill people, throw them in jail because they're making certain statements. They're dead. Jesus ain't want to pay tribute. He's not in the grave. Not going to find his body there. Amen. You'll find signs that he was there. Yeah. All the evidence is he was there. But he rose from the dead. Yeah. He took the devil by the nap of his neck, jacked him up off of yeah. what appeared to be a throne uh -huh. in hell that's not there no more, and took that joker back to him in heaven. He's incarcerated in heaven, and Michael has charge over the devil. In heaven, 
and by the way. Jesus. Bring it in. Because my time done elapsed. I'm going to read this and I'm stopping. What's your train of thought? Your root cause. I need my white brothers and sisters. Why don't y'all come over here? Not because it's black, but because we preach righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We preach the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. I'm finishing them through. I got to stop. I don't want to prolong time. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies. And they will work throughout the South. Take this simple little list of differences. Think about it. On top of my list is age. But it is there only because it begins with A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, size of plantation, status of plantation, attitude of owner, whether the slaves live in the valley, on the hill, east, west, north, or south, have a fine course of hair, or as tall or short, now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust. Envy is stronger than adulation. Respect and admiration. Admiration. The black slave, after receiving this indoctrination, look at this, indoctrination, indoctrination shall carry on and will become self-refueling, self-generating, here we go, for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is the root problem. It's in the white man's nature and it's in the black man's nature. Let me clear. It's second nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's like God Took six million Israelites out of Egypt, but it was like pulling teeth to get Egypt out of them. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hate has been embedded inside the white man. Fear, distrust has been embedded inside the black man. We don't trust nothing with color. If you're white, you're right. If you're black, I don't trust you. Amen. Because they imputed it into the nature and the DNA of the black man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Closing. Don't forget you must pick the old black Venice, the young black, and the young black male against the old black male. Put them against one another. You must use the dark skinned slave versus the light skinned slaves, and the light skinned slaves versus the dark skinned slaves. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. But it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us, the white man. They must love, respect, and trust the white man, us only. Gentlemen, these kits are keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. My plan is guaranteed, and the good thing about this plan is that if used intensely, for one year, the slave themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm. Amen. Now you got sick black folk. Because they don't got a clue of what I just covered. And this is just the introductory. Amen. Amen. He wrote a lot. I'm not going into this. And what I'm doing, all this is in the book of Exodus. 400 years incarceration, afflicted with their burden. This is why I take it to the word. I read the word. That way when I'm quoting it, if I don't get back to the word, something should register. Holy Spirit should bring something back to your members to say, huh, I remember that somewhere. Oh, yeah, he just read that. Amen. Hey, to be continued. Go get people. Don't turn off that computer. Don't turn off that phone. Amen. Tell them to chime in. We're talking about the root cause of this problem. First of all, beginning in America. Here's my closing remark. 
to my black brothers. And this is my closing remark to my black sisters. Come to church somewhere. The white man didn't write the Bible. You got to twist it. Let me bring correction. The white man wrote the history book. That's where all the lies at. Like, for instance, we need to get them to rewrite Christopher Columbus discovered America. See you Wednesday night. God bless. Love. Peace. Stan T. Rice.